Mr. Page, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Board of Liquor License Commissioners proceedings will begin. The board is now in session. If you're in possession of any type of electronic device, please place said device on the off or silent mode during proceedings. Mr. Chairman, there are being two preliminary matters before we move forward. On the third case on the AM docket, 3-5 West North Avenue, a class BD7. That matter has been postponed. Number four on the AM docket, 400 International Drive. That matter has been postponed. Thank you. Call the very first case, Mr. Chairman. Tatiana Ashante and Christopher Pelosi, BPLI LLC, trading as Boston's Restaurant and Sports Bar, 819 East Pratt Street. This is a Class B, a beer, wine, and liquor license. An application for a new Class B, beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license showing $500,000 in capital investment in fixtures and facilities and a seating capacity for a minimum of 75 requesting outdoor table service. Please come forward and raise your right hand. Um, Council, will you identify yourself first for the record? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Leanne Schreckengoss with Royston, Muller, McLean, and Reed here on behalf of the applicants. Are, are all the persons in, with you your clients? Yes. Okay, and I understand there are other people here who are interested in this matter. Um, just you or are there others? Okay. Uh, come on over here, please. Because um, I want to have our uh, reporters swear everybody at once so we don't have to go through that. Um, so I'm going to ask you, because there are a number of you, um, Ms. Bryson there will swear you in. When it's time, you can only speak one at a time, and when you do speak, please step up to the microphone. We're being recorded, and you have to sort of lean into this so that you can be heard. Uh, when you do, give us your name, okay? Um, thank you. Ms. Raise your right hand, please. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing? Will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And before we begin, I wanted to um, take a moment and introduce to everyone who's present this morning our law student intern for the summer, Mr. Darian Nelson here, who's been assisting the board with research uh, and other matters. And uh, he's about to be in his third year at the University of Baltimore, and we uh, think he's going to have a great future in the law. <laughs> you didn't talk him out of it yet? No, not yet. <laughs> Okay, uh, Council, you want to tell us a little bit about this matter? Sure. As indicated, we're here applying for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor license for Boston's Pizza and Grill to open in Little League. Actually, it opened uh, on June 12th, so they're already open and operating without a liquor license in a v building that was previously vacant for the past basically six to seven years. There's now office building on the second floor, which has been operational for about a year and a half, and the restaurant is on the first floor. And is this the old Villages restaurant? Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. <laughs> I tried trying to remember the address, so it's been that long. So, um, yes, the applicants here have, are here to, um, as the file will show, they're fit and proper people, but there obviously is some concern with the area. We do meet the capital investment requirement. There's a capital investment breakdown showing you a $1.7 million investment. It actually ended up being $1.9 million and is still growing um, due to some soundproofing that's going on with the HVAC units, some fencing that's being done around the trash area, so which is actually going on as we speak. So that investment is met. The seating capacity is well over the 75. There's 175 seats at this location. There's a zoning permit in there from the, for the outdoor patio seating, which we are asking approval for as well with respect to the liquor license. Um, the f expected food to alcohol ratio is about 80% food, 20% alcohol. Um, it is a family restaurant that does have a bar aspect with TVs, so there is a sport sports theme to the bar part of it, but as you'll see from the floor plan, the main focus is the family dining experience. Um, I can tell you that Dr. Asante and his wife have met with the community associations, and this, a couple of them are here to speak on their behalf in favor of this. They have also met in person with the gentleman, one of the gentlemen who's here to speak against it um, to address their concerns. And we were kind of blindsided yesterday because we thought everything was in order. He had addressed all the concerns that were presented to him and got the major letter in opposition. So, um, but I can tell you that they have personally met with the gentleman and his wife who sent the lengthy letter in in opposition to this on multiple occasions in their home to address specific concerns. So we were, again, a little taken aback that there were so many let me just indicate for the record that the, the commission had uh, a letter in its file um, raising an objection primarily to the live entertainment and outside table service. Um, but we did, and, and that, I can't really read the name. 
It's <laughs> I can't either, the but that, that request has been withdrawn. We re withdrew oh, okay. the live entertainment request about a month and a half ago. Okay. When the community first <coughs> But today, was about today it. we've been presented with a number of other uh, letters, which I assume mostly are objections, and we'll get There's a chance. There's actually only two letters, one that you have, and a second one that are objections, and there's nine or ten letters in support. Okay. So. Well, let's, uh, let's find it out. Um, what the objections are, so Perfect. we can address that issue. Perfect. Who who wants to speak in opposition? <laughs> Please do, sir. If you'll just tell us your name. Uh, my name is William Main, and I am the owner of the residential. Excuse property. me. Can you spell your last name, please? M A I N. Oh, Main. Main Street. Yeah. Thank you. I am the owner with my wife of the adjoining property to the uh, premises applying for the license. On Pratt Street. We are at 210 South High Street. Oh, High Street, okay. And our northern boundary runs adjacent to the southern boundary of 204 South High Street, which is also 819 East Pratt Street. We lodged an objection of some 13 pages. Is it necessary that this be read into the record? Or no, it it'll be made part of the record. Uh, tell me what your primary objections are. There was primary objections, part one, several violations of the Baltimore City Code, the Maryland State Code. Part two, related to irregularities in the application for license. And part three, commentary on the matters that the board should be considering when deciding whether to issue the license. Now, uh, this is a, looks like you've done a great deal of work in order to prepare this. Why didn't you give us this ahead of time? At one stage, we thought we may not object so strongly. However, events that have taken place in the recent past have formed our opinion that this objection needed to be filed. Okay. All right, let's go ahead. In part one, we find there are seven violations of the Baltimore City Code or the Maryland City Code. So we can read those, yes. Well, well I don't <laughs> do I read them all? No, you, 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 you needn't read any of them. We can read them. Yep. One of which is that the premises has been operating, inviting people to bring their own liquor in contradictory to the Maryland State Code. So the premises have been breaking the law. They had their air conditioning equipment installed without seeking the appropriate permits from the city. And not only was it installed without permit, it was installed at 4 o'clock in the morning, which is contrary to the Baltimore City Code. Despite a couple of complaints from us about that, that work continued. The equipment emanates a noise far above what the allowable decibel rating is under the Baltimore City Health Code and the Maryland State Code. Despite various complaints about that, to date, nothing has been done. And as included in the letter, there is in fact a table of decibel readings taken at various times of the day. And what you see is that unabated 24-7, the rating has been, on average, 30% above the allowable maximum under city code and Maryland state code. We consider that these violations should cause the board to not issue a license. In addition to that, turning our attention to the application, the application seems to be deficient and does not comply with the Maryland state code for liquor license application, nor does it seem to meet the rules of this board. The applicant is an LLC. The law states that at least three persons must apply for the license on behalf of an LLC. In this case, there are only two, yet there are at least three members of the LLC. The third member, of course, being Dr. Asante. Dr. Asante did not apply because he already holds a liquor license for another premises. 
And under Maryland law, he's prohibited to have more than one license and therefore did not apply, despite the fact that he owns 99% of the LLC making the application for the license. This is contrary to Maryland law. Maryland law does not allow someone to hold more than one license, whether it be held directly or indirectly. In other words, as an owner of the LLC, he is precluded from holding a second license. One of the applicants failed to disclose a material piece of information. The regulations governing application require that if you are a naturalized citizen, you have to disclose when and where you were naturalized. This is not done. This makes the application incomplete. One other point I would like to bring to the board's attention and may ask for clarification is that this license is being applied for a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license under the provisions of Section 12903, which says uh, at least 75 seats and a minimum investment of $500,000. In fact, the location of the, uh, the premises is in Ward 3, uh, sorry, District 46, Precinct 3, Little Italy, the law says $700,000 maximum invest, a uh, minimum investment, and also 65% minimum food to liquor ratio. So the question I would ask the board is, is the license issued on the basis of section 12903 or section 12-1604? Well, we have to uh, ferret that out with through cross-examination and other issues, but finish your presentation, sir. When we look at what 1604 requires, a minimum investment of $700,000, whilst the applicant presented us a budget, there's been no presentation of what the actual expenditure has been. When we look at that budget, we see things on that budget that are not allowed to be included in the calculation of the minimum investment. There's an, inv an amount of 500000 for structural building work. This is not part of what is allowed in the minimum investment. That structural building work was undertaken by another person, not by the applicant or any organization associated with the applicant. That building's permits from the city have been issued to a company or an LLC called 204 South High Street, which is the owner of the building, <coughs> not to the licensee. There's been no permits other than one permit issued for a fire sprinkler system. So where has the investment come? Who has been making the investment? How much is it? None of that information is before the commission at this stage. And to support the law, it must be there. We just, uh, a one-page budget seems hardly sufficient to warrant an investment of this size. Turning our attention to the third issue, that is of the need for the neighborhood to have another restaurant. This neighborhood, bounded by East Pratt, Eastern Avenue, President, and Central, an area of approximately 50 acres of ground has already 18 restaurants in it, 15 of which are licensed. Is there a real need for another restaurant? Boston's brings nothing unique to the district. Anything and everything on Boston's menu, you can get at any one of a number of restaurants already in the Little Italy district. There is hardly much need for another. The sports bar content of the restaurant occupies about 50% or so of the space. <coughs> Introducing a sports bar of this nature into the Little I Italy district is out of character with the nature, uh, with the, the nature of the district. 
it will attract possible young males and not to be disparaging about young males but we do know they bring noise they bring commotion <coughs> they bring petty crime they bring other disturbance to the neighborhood this is a quiet neighborhood not based on your personal experience is I'm it? sorry not based on your personal experience well I'm not a young male <laughs> <laughs> um, and I won't pass judgment on yourself <laughs> <laughs> so what we're saying then is that the clientele that Boston's will attract, particularly after the 10 o'clock hour, will not be the family. It will be what we'll call the young male for the, the point of the exercise. And this is introducing an element into the Little Italy district that none of the residents would prefer. Anything further? I'm sorry? Do you have anything further? Oh, yes. I'm not. Sorry, I'm not done yet. Okay. Um, Boston's will not really add to the fortunes of Little Italy, which are declining as a result of the expanded development in Fells Point and in Harbour East. In fact, there have been seven restaurants in the past few years that have closed their doors because of a lack of clientele or competition or whatever it is. And to introduce Boston's that offers nothing more to the neighbourhood brings the opportunity of possibly <coughs> increasing the, the disturbance of the neighborhood, we feel isn't warranted for the neighborhood. On the issue of parking, I provided a couple of exhibits, were they in the, and it showed the layout of the streets. Did we, did we see these things, these in there? I believe so. Now, what this is showing is the layout of the streets in the immediate vicinity of the, the subject premises. And exhibit one demonstrates what a vehicle has to do to get to the parking yeah. garage that Boston's are recommending clients park their car in. It takes about 10 minutes for a car to go from a drop-off point at Boston's to the car park in question. It is highly unlikely that patrons are going to spend that time placing their car in the garage. They're going to park it on the street. They're going to park it in the areas where the residents of Little Italy already battle each other to get a parking spot. Now we're going to have to battle with the clientele from Boston. Exhibit 2 demonstrates the limited car parking space in the 200 block of South Albemarle and South High Street. Boston's are setting up to attract up to 100 customers an hour. There's not enough parking spaces in Little Italy to accommodate that. Boston's are not providing any parking at all. And when you look at Exhibit 1 again, if I'm coming to Boston's and I'm coming down Pratt Street, East Pratt Street, traveling east, and I stop in front of the restaurant where the front door is to disembark passengers, I am creating a significant and dangerous traffic condition. East Pratt is one of the major exits from the city. It's a one-way street, has three lanes of traffic. It also has city bus services running the length of it. One vehicle stopping in front of this restaurant will cause a bank up <coughs> that will go across President Street. Now I'm sure we're all aware of the traffic congestion that happens at President Street and Pratt Street on any day of the week. One car stops. If there's a bus coming, that bus has got to move out into the center traffic lane. If there's a Cisco truck delivering goods to the restaurant, it could be there for 20 minutes or half an hour, obstructing a full lane of traffic on East Pratt Street. On the other hand, if I turn into Albemarle Street, I'm immediately going to stop because that's where the restaurant is, right on the corner of Albemarle and East Pratt. Two cars stopping there will cause an immediate traffic snarl on East Pratt Street. 
So this diagram indicates the traffic pattern that's going to happen as with the increased volume of traffic. And we would suggest that this is intolerable for the Little Italy district. And in an effort to finish quickly, we turn to the health and welfare. As I said, I'm the neighbor. We actually run a bed and breakfast. We've been running a bed and breakfast quite successfully for six years until this air conditioning that's on the roof, put there without permit, put there contrary to the building code, making a significantly higher noise than what is permitted is destroying our business. At four o'clock in the morning, we are getting 70 decibels plus happening. What that means is that if you are in bed, it's like being at the end of an aircraft runway. Both vibration and noise echoes throughout the property. We can no longer open the windows because of this noise. And despite the fact that there's already a violation from the Baltimore City Health Department, nothing has been done about this. And it's been going on since the establishment opened. There is standing water on the roof of the establishment. The Baltimore Health Department are concerned about the uh, spread of Zika and all these mosquito-borne diseases that may happen. There is a breeding ground on the roof of this property because the roofing does not align with the drainage. And there's a constant pool of water on the roof, even today, despite the fact that it doesn't rain for several days, that water is still there. The building is in violation of the city code regarding its stormwater drain. It is draining stormwater under the sidewalk, which is illegal. It is draining stormwater under my property, which is illegal. They are draining the condensation out of their air conditioning units under my property and the sidewalk, which is illegal. And so our request is, when the board considers these other factors, they also come down and deny the issuing of this license. I have to, I mean, I have to comment that while those all may be very relevant factors in terms of the restaurant, what they're here for is a liquor license. So the restaurant would continue with or without the license. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> but I mean, we don't control their um, I, I understand, HVAC no, system. but uh, I, is it not the case with our law that they have to comply with all of the city and state code? Well, is it not the so case? we will hear. Okay. But do you, do you, is there anything further you want to add, sir? I think I've taken enough of okay. your time. Well, I thank the board. Well, you have to stay for a moment because council gets a chance to question oh, you. Oh, I stay here? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Right. Council, you have cross examination. I'm through witnesses. I will address all of the points that have been made by this gentleman unless the board has any specific questions for him. I, I don't know if the commissioners do. This is pretty clear. Mm -hmm. no. okay. I, I, we understood what you said. Thank you. Uh, we understood your testimony and we thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, how many uh, individuals are here in protest other than Mr. Maine? Uh, is it just the gentleman in the back? I can't hear you, sir. Can you come forward, please? For, some, for, another, uh, for another thing that's separate. Thing. Okay. Separate from this case? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm confused. Are you here on this case? No, I'm no Mr. Chairman, he's not. Oh, okay. Well, that, then that wasn't responsive to my question. <laughs> Who is here in protest of this license? Yes, ma'am. You. you have to come forward and give your name, please, ma'am. My name, you know, now I'm teasing. <laughs> I did. Javonna Blatterman. Where am I? Matter, we, just, we need to record oh, your okay. testimony. Sure. Okay. Javonna Blatterman, the yes, Little League Community Organization. Um, it's 
what am I, what I am here for is in support of both of them. So, both of whom? Uh, the appellant and the gentleman that just gave uh, his uh, opposition. Uh, uh, you have to clarify that for me. So you support the license, but you're opposed to the license. I'm, I'm supporting the gentleman, Dr. Asante, coming in and, and trying to attain, I'll, I'll get a license approved. And I am also supporting the fact that this gentleman has all these problems, and I'm not too certain whether they would be Dr. Asante's problems or the owner of the building's problems, and I don't know. That'll be for you to okay. decipher. So I'm here to support, in a sense, and I'm here to give you the minutes of a meeting at which 67 people attended um, after they're done, I guess, asking questions of uh, the opponent. No, no, no you, may, you can testify now. I wanted oh. uh, to find out what the opposition okay. is. Well, uh, we invited uh, Dr. Asante to our community meeting, and as I said, I, uh, I have um, I had 67 people attend the meeting. And, and I the can organization get, is? Uh, the Little Italy Community Organization. Okay. Um, I, can, uh, I can give you the um, signatures at your request. That's all right. Okay, but I do have the minutes of the meeting. And um, at, at the meeting, uh, we, everyone, 99% uh, uh, protested the live entertainment. But they've withdrawn that. They have. Mm -hmm. On our request, he has. That evening, he withdrew it. And um, so that was our, our major concern. Mm -hmm. um, so in the minutes th that I have that I'm going to um, submit for the record, I have that um, the concern was that, and it was withdrawn, and that uh, the other concern was the valet parking, and we are in consideration and speaking of that because I don't believe that they will be issued a valet space because of the proximity of their restaurant. It's gonna be very difficult for the traffic uh, if they have a valet space. Um, the other item that I have in the minutes that we discussed was the, um, I believe you should probably have on record the planning uh, documents and the zoning documents because they have been before the zoning board. In reference to the outdoor table service that we wanted ceased at 11 p.m. to which he agreed, so I have that in the minutes. And during the, the meeting, Dr. Sante um, had a discussion with uh, Bill, this gentleman, I'm sorry, last name again. Mr. Bain. Okay. Mr. Bain. Okay. Uh, so that I didn't put his name, but they, there was a discussion, an open discussion, that Dr. Sante agreed to discuss with him and correct the ongoing structural problems privately with them. So I wanted to put that into the record also because that was agreed upon in order to get our support. Okay. So this letter is in support with the items that I... Um, and do we have your letter? No, it's not a letter. I, I just gave you my minutes. Okay. I just brought my minutes. That's fine. May we make them part of our record? Sure, I brought Thank them you. for you, so... I'll give them to Ms. Russell. And, and in saying that, I mean, um, everything the gentleman said is correct. And we like to give people <coughs> in our community a chance. The restaurant is a permitted use. Um, and we're trying to keep it a community of families. We, our, my family has a restaurant. I know how difficult it is. I know how parking is. And I, I am with the residents and the business owners of that community trying to keep a, a middle road is, is difficult sometimes. So um, we are in support of it with the conditions that we've agreed upon, which are in the minutes. Okay. And do you have questions for this witness? I do. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate your testimony. Thank you. Okay. Let's hear from you. I just want to quickly introduce you to Neil Lanzi, he's the attorney for the landlord who can give you just a brief, I know the zoning issues are not before you, but since they've been raised, I would like him to address them. And were you sworn, sir? I was. Okay, thanks. Yes. Spell your last name, please. Uh, for the record, it's Neil, N-E-I-L, last name L-A-N-Z-I. I'm an attorney with Wright, Constable, and Skeen. Our firm was just hired literally this week. Um, 
to assist the property owner and obviously that representation became more urgent upon receipt of the letter that was filed with you all which I didn't see till about six o'clock last night so so the owner did ask me to appear today just to, as his representative so just to address a few things the owner of the property is 204 South High Street LLC and um, they have a business on the second floor uh, that's where his office is it's his principal office for his business which is a, a government IT um, supplier uh, for civilian Department of Defense um, very very sophisticated stuff and these issues that were raised uh, some of the issues that were mentioned about water and noise and there's been kind of a long-standing uh, uh, feud might be too strong a word but a long-standing dispute. Uh, dispute between neighbors um, which is now kind of poured into this and I am NOT A LIQUOR uh, LICENSE EXPERT. Uh, I DON'T ADVISE CLIENTS ON THAT. BUT JUST BASED ON MY KNOWLEDGE, I DO HANDLE ZONING MATTERS. AND I DON'T BELIEVE THAT THEY SHOULD BE RELEVANT TO YOUR DECISION. THAT'S I'm JUST FOR WHATEVER THAT'S WORTH. SO SOME OF THESE ISSUES um, I THINK YOU SHOULD BE AWARE OF. Um, uh, JUST FOR, I'LL GIVE YOU A COUPLE EXAMPLES. Um, he, he, I MENTIONED ABOUT NOISE AND NOTHING'S BEEN DONE. A CONTRACTOR HAS BEEN, I BELIEVE, RETAINED. PLANS ARE BEING DRAWN UP. An extension has been requested with Baltimore City because you don't just whip up a, a sand barrier plan in a couple weeks. I believe it's about a week to get the plans drawn up, about four to six weeks to have the install done. Um, and so that's underway uh, now. Um, with, with regard to the HVAC system, my understanding is the permit's been applied for. There may be a fine for, for not having the permit. I believe the contractor, the HVAC contractor, was replacing kind of a one for one system. Um, I guess he didn't realize that you needed a permit. As soon as he found out, the permit's been applied for. So that issue should be resolved. With regard to um, the, the drainage uh, and the water standing on the roof, um, it's, I, I just found that uh, very interesting. Uh, that was actually some of, the, of his exhibits. Um, I have affidavits from contractors that wanted to make repairs which would alleviate drainage, water standing on the roof. But they're not permitted to ex uh, to enter. There's a, about a three to five foot alleyway between buildings. The question is, who owns it? There's a fence, a gate. They're locked. My guys have not been permitted to do it. So that's an issue for another day. Shouldn't have any bearing. But you should know the other side of the story. He's wanted to fix things. He wants to do it. He may have to take other action in order to do it. But you know, it, if you can't get in there without the police being called, then you have a problem fixing things. So. This guy has the means to do it, wants to do it, and uh, when you say this guy, you mean your client? Our client, and so at, at some point, however <laughs> we uh, need to achieve it, he'll be able to, to make remedies to any issues with uh, runoff or drainage or, or water. So I was just looking at some of the uh, exhibits just to make sure I, I caught everything. I was I went to the site, and so I'm familiar with where the HVAC and where the alleged um, drainage issues are. I did see um, an extension letter was submitted to the inspector for the noise issue. Um, this is a proposal for the noise control. So everything is definitely un underway in good faith. And the affidavits, I don't know whether you would need to see them. They're from contractors that were ready to do the work, were asked to prepare plans, plans were prepared, and then they were refused access. So it's kind of hard to resolve things if you don't have access, you know, one neighbor to, an to another neighbor. Uh, no matter who owns the property. So that's, that's kind of where we are now. Um, they are trying to resolve these issues. And like I said, we were just retained. I haven't even sp spoken to the inspector yet. So we will be um, on that and make sure all those things are resolved. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have some questions. Oh, please, so. excuse me. Mr. Lanzi, commissioner has a question. Um, Ms. <laughs> Who's preventing access to the area um, to do the uh, the drainage repairs. My understanding, the neighbor, the gentleman that's say spoke. the neighbor. Are you referring, Mr. Mr. Maine. Mr. Maine. Yeah. Okay, is that the same area that had to be accessed in order to install the um, the HVAC system? Honestly, Was I'm not sure. The okay. HVAC system is on the roof of the building, and that's the and same. And they needed a crane. Uh, um, since you mentioned that, I believe there was an allegation of four in the morning. My understanding from speaking with my client is. The fact that it's such a large piece of equipment in the middle of the street, they thought best to do it when it's not going to disrupt traffic. Um, but so I just I don't know anything more than I mean, that. Disrupting traffic versus disrupting the neighbors, I think 
different decisions have to must be made going forward. Sure. Because it would be very difficult um, for me to give permission to something that's so disruptive of the community. Right. You're talking about the crane. I'm talking. No, I'm talking about uh, the whole process. The whole. Um, right. In particular, the air conditioning system that was installed without a permit. Right. That concerns me that that kind of decision is being made so early in the life of this business. Right. That's very concerning. And, I, and, and I'm, sh I'm not sure if you've had the experience, but I've had clients that you rely on contractors to do things the right way. And then when you become aware they, they didn't, then you immediately have the client or the a contractor take care of it. And that's my understanding. It's being taken care of. I believe the system and all that's fine. There just needs to be this sound barrier put in place. So, anything else? Okay. Now, Mr. Mann, you'll get a chance to rebut after we have to hear their testimony. Yeah. Yeah, with respect There's to it, go ahead. We've, we've already, she's calling her witnesses. I'm sorry. No. Do you want to go ahead? No. I would like to yeah, please, to please, go ahead. Right. Okay, so they had no more opposition. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Sarah Lang. I'm a resident of Little Italy. I live two blocks from Boston's, and I was rudely thrust into the throes of civic life when my husband was mugged on our doorstep at the end of January at 9.30 on a Tuesday evening. I am new to things like this, but I think it's very important that people be involved. I work downtown. I took an early lunch to be here because I think it's really important that Boston gets a liquor license. Um, as someone who is in their 30s, planning to have a family, certainly also concerned about Zika, but I'm concerned about the well-being of, and I don't mean that lightly. I mean, I really don't. And I certainly appreciate that there are residents that are looking out for every aspect of life in Little Italy, including Gia, including Mr. Maine. Um, it's, it's so important that we're talking together as a community, but one of the things that I have seen firsthand from Dr. Asante and his whole team is that he is 100% willing to come to every community meeting to which he has been invited, both LICO and an organization, I, and I was attending, I, I attended the LICO meeting, but also an organization called LIPOA, which I'm involved in. He has come to everything. He has invited folks to come in to learn about his business, his plans, how he operates, take our questions. And um, it seems to me that when we have a partner like that who has invested money in our neighborhood, who wants to put more people on the street at all times of day or night, more foot traffic walking through, but also more um, commercial support for the businesses that we have, when he's shown a willingness to invest a significant sum in what was another vacant restaurant in Little Italy, we have so many of them. And I think it is directly correlated to the level of crime we've experienced from young males primarily in our neighborhood, but older males too. I mean, we've had everything. And when we're talking about the issue today of a liquor license, this is a restaurant that is already up and running they have outdoor seating, which is lovely and something that I would really love to have more of in Baltimore. And it's an environment that is very distinct from other restaurants, all of which I love in Little Italy. And it offers something new to a new demographic to welcome them to Little Italy. I think there are a lot of folks who might be regulars at Sabatino's who don't also think like, oh, after a nice dinner, I can go get a drink somewhere else, or who might want to come down to Vaccaro's and before that, have a burger and watch a game. I, I think there is a lot to offer, and I think we're kind of missing the forest for the trees talking about some of these other issues. And when we have a partner like Dr. Asante and his team, his managers, um, they have shown an accountability to our community, and I will very willingly personally engage in holding them accountable where there are issues from a neighborhood perspective. Um, they have shown a willingness to work with us and to provide a really nice outlet. Frankly, I think the bar element of the sports bar is a little bit small, but there's a really large restaurant component as well, which is very much a family environment. I mean, there, there are high chairs. And I plan to have children in the next few years, and I would love to have a place I can easily, safely walk with my family, with my friends, and to go watch a, an O's game or a Ravens game. And I think for the purposes of today, that's really what we're talking about. I'd be happy to answer any other questions, but um, I, I thought it was important to take time from my day, my job. I plan to be here for a while, and I would love to see this restaurant succeed, and I'd love to see more restaurants go into all those vacant spaces and have it not be as difficult for them. 
So thank, thank you. you very much. Okay. Um, do you have other testimony you want to present? I just wanted to address any of the points that the board. Yep. I don't want to go through the. I don't want to. Okay. Belabor this, but I want to address any of the specific concerns that you have. Well, come on right. up. The commissioners may have questions. Yeah, exactly. So the, the restaurant is open and it's operating. The outdoor seating is open and in use. Have there been any problems at all since it's been open? It's only been open since June 12th. There have been no complaints. Okay, no problems. so we so got 17 not, days. Exactly, <laughs> but no, there have a been lot, no issues. Yeah, okay. And I would like to just quickly address, there. I do have a proposal for the noise control. That That's would be important. It is. It's a $5,000 investment that is going to be in. There's specific soundproofing that has to be designed and then installed. So that is underway. The contract was actually entered into on June 13th. So this was not just a gut reaction to what happened and the, mm -hmm. the letter we got yesterday. It has been addressed. The concerns have been heard, and it is being dealt with. It's not going to be installed, as Mr. Lanzi said, for another probably three weeks because it has to be specifically manufactured for mm -hmm. this roof. Mm -hmm. That will address the noise concerns and get the decibel levels down. Okay. There's also one of the other concerns that we, that were brought up was enclosure of the trash area. That is actually being done, finished as we speak. The final construction for the fencing around the trash area, which was one of the concerns, the, the trash bin was overflowing and it was unsightly. That fence, which that Dr. Asante is taking on himself at the restaurant as opposed to the landlord. So that is actually underway right now. They're finishing it up as we speak. So those were the two major mm -hmm. issues that have been presented mm -hmm. since that have since been open. Uh, okay. And in terms of um, communication with, I mean, you, you obviously have a very engaged nearby neighbor. Is there a plan to have further efforts to communicate with him and try to set his concerns aside? And I do have a question for Mr. Main that I want you to think about, and that is giving access to that roof area so that they can abate the problem with the water drainage. It sounds like you're the one that's I mean, if you're the one that's able to give that, I want you to. I want you to do that. <laughs> okay, great. That's a yes. Okay. So, and with respect to communication, I'm going to introduce you to. Could you Very please important, because that that's going to determine the success or failure if you do get the liquor license. Please state okay? your name and address yes, for the record. Um, I'm Keith Asante, um, and so prior, uh, prior to signing the lease and after the lease, my wife and I uh, met with Mr. Main and his wife. Uh, we exchanged emails and ask if we could come see them to first introduce ourselves and to also hear their concerns about a restaurant coming next door to them. And so they agreed for us to come. We met in their living room, uh, sat for about an hour and chat, um, and they had a lot of questions and concerns about parking, uh, the trash area, um, uh, uh, water issues on the roof and things like that. I, I assured him that I work with the landlord. I'm a tenant. But I showed him that I work with the landlord to address all of this. Um, and we met a second time um, in his house uh, with him and his wife. And that, that second visit was to show him the plans, the seating chart. And so we have been in, in, in constant communication as well as meeting at the, uh, the two separate community, uh, 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 the, the community meetings. Uh, we've also had chats on the, on the street side and things like that. And then, and I, I personally uh, I will continue to talk to him as well as the rest of the community to continually hear their concerns and to make sure that they are addressed immediately. Uh, and if I may add, we are a family restaurant. Uh, I, I pride myself in, in making sure that if we are designing a, a restaurant, it's a place that I can, I can go myself with my wife and, and children. We have a two-year-old all the way to almost 14. Uh, and so we will not create a place that uh, 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 that, that, that I would feel ashamed to take my, my, my wife and, and, and children. Hey, so I have a 10-year-old granddaughter, and she's my barometer, and you think that's a place I could, I could take her? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> she, she will love that. All right. What is the closing time? Uh, from Sunday to Thursday is 11 p.m., and then Friday and Saturday is 12 p.m., except the patio, which... You mean 12 a.m.? Uh, I'm sorry, 12 a.m. <laughs> we love it if you close at 12 p.m. <laughs> okay. um, except the patio, which... We have changed the hours to 11 p.m. as uh, in agreement okay. with the community's uh, re request. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. And right. if, if I may add quickly, the uh, the issue with the permit of uh, the permit with the HVAC on the roof, mm -hmm. we, we did we did have permit, and I called Miss um, the inspector in uh, uh, in charge of the area uh, of Little Italy. And she immediately checked the Baltimore City system and said, well, you have permit. I'm not sure why okay. the violation was, was issued. So I'm not sure if 
there's a separate unit that actually belongs to the the the, uh, the, the landlord that services a separate area versus our, our systems that services the I don't know, but it, it could be that you got the violation for the noise. There is a separate violation. There's a separate noise violation for the noise. Okay. The and, you're gonna, and you're addressing it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Th thank you. And stay right here. <laughs> to address the parking issue, he's entered into a parking agreement that I can inter I, I, introduce. I, I, Go ahead. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. So the, 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 uh, as part of um, the discussions that uh, uh, began before the construction started, joint construction, and then um, uh, uh, attending the, the community meetings. Uh, uh, parking has been a, a major concern for for, for for majority of the residents in, in Lily. So what we decided to try to avert some of our customers parking on the street is enter into an agreement with PMI Parking, which is directly across from us, uh, mm -hmm. adjacent uh, when you enter. And is that a Pratt Street? Uh, it, you can enter on Pratt Street or enter from Star, Styles. It's right by um, the museum. Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. Um, and what we are offering is that we are, we've begun advertising on all our social media pages that we want all our customers to park at PMI, not on the street. Uh, at certain times, even at, at actually the last two weekends, we've offered completely free parking uh, to all customers to encourage them to park there uh, rather than park on the street. Uh, with, with the help of some 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 folks, we all, we've also been able to get uh, vouchers that we can offer customers for free parking when they park at the uh, Lily Lee parking uh, lot. But that's about a block or so away. Well, this so is an issue I walk. suspect for all the restaurants in Little Italy. Uh, uh, do absolutely. They, do the rest of them all have valet parking? I don't believe so. No. No. Okay. Okay. And 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 if um, at at certain times when we can offer, and this is all. Uh, a major cost to the restaurant because we are paying PMI parking uh, for, for, for all customers to park there. Uh, we, we also, uh, as part of the agreement, we have a PMI validation machine that sits at the host stand. So all customers that park inside a restaurant, they will have their tickets validated uh, for a cost of $5 during times when we do not offer free parking, which is about 70% off the regular parking rate. I'm going to turn it over to the board for any specific questions that you would like addressed. I don't want to. I know. I just to clarify one question, Mr. Mainray. So the applicants here are um, T Tatiana Asante and Christopher Palazzi, not the LLC. Is that right? That is correct. That's correct. Okay. Anything else? I, I do have a question, Dr. Asante. Briefly, can you um, speak to um, the experience, your experience, and the other uh, proposed licensees? experience in this kind of uh, work? Uh, yes, sir, absolutely. So we, we've been, uh, myself, I joined, my background, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a, you can tell from my accent, I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, I, I came here uh, to the U.S. 1992, 91, 92, and uh, you know, I did every job you can think of. Uh, I later joined the U.S. Army for 11 years. Uh, during that time, I, I, I became a chef uh, which well, my wife says says I I, I I don't know how to cook still, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, I I became a chef and fell in love with the act of creating meals and and being a, and just being a, of service to to others. Um, I I left that trade and became a scientist and and opened up other businesses after I left the, the U.S. Army. Uh, but my my love for that ne never left, so I went back into the restaurant business. We opened uh, one location in, in Hartford County, which we manage uh, very successfully now. And, and my wife has uh, previously been a bartender for a long time, so we've been in the industry for a long time. So you understand the rules and regulations, and your counsel has briefed you on that and explained yes, to you sir, what you're Yes, sir, absolutely. On. Thank you. And you have a very experienced management staff, correct? Absolutely, yep. absolutely. Thank yes. you. No. Okay, anything further? Not unless the board wants me to address anything specific. Uh, Mr. May had wanted to make a comment. Where is he? Please come back up. But keep in mind, I have eight more cases this morning. <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> um, at one point, I just wish to clarify did you not ask who the applicant was, whether it was the person or the LLC? I did. On the form, the applicant is the LLC. The, app, the license that you list an entity that will hold the permit, but app, the individual applicants are the ones who physically hold. On, on behalf of the LLC. That is correct. Well, <laughs> sh 
surely everything I've said about that then stands, that you need three applicants if there are three members. There's another portion of the law that says it's authorized persons, which are separate from members. I understand that. So we have specifically authorized two individuals of the mm -hmm. LLC to I apply agree. for and hold this license. And because there are only two authorized persons, those are the two individuals mm -hmm. who have applied for But that is not the case. It is the case. Uh, Dr. Vicente is an authorized person. He is not an authorized person for the purposes of holding and applying for this liquor license. But he's no an one. authorized person of the LLC. He's a member of the LLC. And an authorized person. That's the question is, who I is getting your the issue. license? And I think that the lady is misrepresenting the case. The LLC is applying for the license. The LLC is running the business. However, that was just an aside from the question that you asked. Um, I'd like to address some questions to the attorney representing the owner of the building. Um, well, I, I, I well, it is. It is. <laughs> what does it have to do with the liquor license? Of what uh, Commissioner Moore said to me, which was to think about why not give them access. The question that was put up here, or the the impression that was raised is you that... said yes, so why are we going on? <laughs> you agreed to it. No. I thought you said yes, that you would do that no, and no, that we could move no. on. My point here is that the owner of this building is wanting an easement from us to do his drainage. We will not do that. He just wants access to the roof so that he can, can fix no, the problem that you're not. complaining he of. No, he does not. He wants to put the drainage on our property. That's what he wants to do. That's why it's been going That's on for so That's a separate issue from the, from the liquor license application. But the impression the gentleman gave us was there was an alleyway and we have locked the door. There is no alleyway. I wonder if the gentleman has bothered to do a title search and look at who owns what property here. The building is right on the property line. The drainage system is over the property line. This is the classic argument of I cut the branches off your tree because it hangs over my fence. Their drainage is hanging over my fence. Okay. It is pouring all over my property because there is no downspouts at all. So it's not a case of us not allowing something to happen, not cooperating. The law says it must be on his own property, and that's all we've all said. Right, so you'll have to take that up in another forum. We understand that. Forum. I'm, okay. I, I bring that up in refute of what okay. this gentleman said and try to give you the impression that I was the stumbling I appreciate. Board. I appreciate why you're, not the you're speaking. Board. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anything further? <laughs> we really do have I'm to move I'm trying on. to think of the next question. Look, <laughs> look, I think I've said a lot. I think you understand my position. You certainly see me as an angry neighbor, because I am, because I've been abused by both Mr. Asante and the owner of the building in many forms. And you asked why was I so late in delivering this letter? The reason for that is we were still thinking, uh, maybe it'll get fixed. One more thing. If it's going to take them six weeks to fix this noise problem, how about they wait six weeks for their license also. That's not the issue before us, but thank you. I know it's not the issue, but I have to suffer the six weeks. They don't do anything. The liquor license won't make it any noisier on I your roof. I understand that, <laughs> but it will make them do it quickly. But that's not our goal. I, I think you're going to have to dispute. Concern. You're going to have to dispute. Look, obviously there are Look, some very real disputes that you have with them, and I I that's understood. That. Um, I understand it's not part of this hearing either. Yeah. I think my letter addresses what the issues are that we believe you should consider. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay. Anything further? Commissioners have any questions? No. Okay. Uh, on the basis of the evidence that's been presented uh, in the materials before the board as well as the exhibits um, submitted this morning in support of the applications, on the basis of the testimony that we've heard, uh, I'm going to vote to approve the license, but I 
say, it's, it's pretty obvious that there are uh, outstanding disputes between the adjoining neighbor and the property owner and perhaps uh, the licensee, um, and they're going to have to try to find a forum in which to resolve those or else this is going to fester and you all will be back here and there will be protests on the license and there will be violations issued and that's not any way to operate a business. So please. Um, reinstitute your communication with Mr. Maine and his business and see if you can get those things resolved promptly. But for, uh, on the basis of what I have before me, I vote to approve. I vote to approve as well, um, but I also acknowledge that there, there are serious problems that are not going to go away if they are not addressed and they're going to make everyone's life completely miserable. This location is very important to Baltimore. It's a key part of the puzzle of completing and filling in and making viable and livable, um, not just Little Italy, but the Inner Harbor and all of Baltimore. So it's important that something good happen there, and um, I hope that it does. Um, while I'm sensitive to uh, Mr. Maine's concerns, as my colleagues are, I, I found uh, Ms. Lang's testimony compelling. Um, I, I do think uh, that this amount of investment that's occurring, uh, the foot traffic, um, how it is, I do think unique in this particular area, um, I think is, is persuasive to me. So I too would uh, approve. Um, as, as my colleague said, uh, this issue isn't going away. I'm, um, I appreciate the fact that Dr. Asante has been engaged. I'm hopeful that the landlord too will be more engaged now because it sounds like it's gonna have to take both of you to get this address. Okay, thank you. Uh, good luck to everyone. I uh, hope that uh, the disputes can be resolved. Um, but we've got to move ahead, Mr. Page. You want to call the exhibits? Sure. I'd call the exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, 8 letters of support. Board Exhibit 2, letter of opposition. Board Exhibit 3, petition of opposition. Community Exhibit 1, minutes from Little Italy Community Association meeting dated June 1st, 2017. African Exhibit 1, parking agreement. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Paul J. IBT LLC, treating as Ida B's table, 235 North Holiday Street. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. An application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license showing $500,000 in capital investment in restaurant fixtures and facilities, seating capacity for a minimum of 75, also requesting live entertainment and off premise catering. Please come forward. Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners Lee and Shrek and Gost again on behalf of Royston, Mullen, McLean, and Reed and the applicants. Are all of these people in support of the application yes, this I time? Yes, I believe we have anybody against this one. Okay. Well, I apologize for the delay. Um, as you saw, that was, uh, it took a while to get through that last one. So would everyone who's going to speak uh, to us this morning please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Okay, when you do speak, please identify yourself and speak into the mic. Uh, Council? Thank you. As indicated, again, we are here for a new liquor license for uh, the Ida B's kitchen, Ida B's table, which is opening up here right, right behind us on Holiday Street. Um, it's going to be on the first floor of the building. The capital investment requirement, you have the breakdown in your um, package of capital investment. It well exceeds the $500,000 requirement, and the seating is over the 75 minimum as required by the law. The anticipated sales breakdown for this location is 80% food, 20% alcohol. The hours of operation are going to be Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So very restricted hours. There's n the whole intent behind this restaurant is to bring life to the corner there. There's nothing that, it offer that this corner offers for the residents. And I will introduce you to Mr. Paul Jay. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Paul Jay, um, I live right across the street from the building. I'm in 234 Holiday Street. And okay. the condos there, the Breco building. And so you will be the sole licensee for this location, correct? Right. And could you please tell the board what the uh, feeling of the condo association is with respect to this restaurant? Um, well, I'm also president of the condo association. <laughs> he got reelected last night. <laughs> but we had an annual meeting I don't last know if night. Deserve, congratulations for that. It's also what I said. I shouldn't use the word reelected. I got re whatever. Um, <laughs> Yeah, everyone's enthusiastic about it. it uh, the, the corner is very dead uh, outside of business hours. Um, everybody sees the uh, restaurant as a thing that will increase property values and 
there really isn't outside of Charles Street and going down to the tourist area. For an increasing number of people living on that corner, there's the condo that we're in, there's an apartment building at 222 Saratoga, and there's a new 340 unit apartment building going up in two blocks up. There's nothing in that whole area. You have to you know, go up to Charles Street. So I think it's going to give new life to the whole area. I know in terms of the um, downtown partnership and other discussions that have gone on, gone on to try to give life to that whole area, including the square in front of City Hall, um, I think it's going to help bring people up from, you know, bring traffic up into this area, tourist traffic. So uh, anyway, the sense of the meeting was it's, uh, you know, it's a win-win. And who's going to actually be hands-on running the operation? Yeah, should, should I just give a little bit of what sure, the structure yes, of this thing is? And then we can answer. The building is the Real News Network, and the reason we're doing this, I'm the CEO and senior editor of the Real News Network, and uh, this building is, we own both 231 and 235. Our TV studios are in 231, and we have uh, various kinds of office space in 235, including on the second floor, a lot, a lot of local community groups rent space on the second floor. Uh, the third floor is a big 6,500-foot open space, which we're now renting out for weddings and events. Um, it also gets used Hence for... That's the request for off-premises catering. Um, so for us, this is a lot to do with community outreach. We want people to get to know more about us and what we're doing. Um, it's a business, too, uh, but uh, it has a lot to do with our mission, which is to try to and do a kind of original kind of news that's very solutions-based for Baltimore. Um, <laughs> In terms of the day-to-day -day running of the restaurant, we have a very experienced team, and they can introduce themselves. Um, David Thomas, I'll be the exec chef. Okay. And who's going to manage the place? I will. I'll you will. And it. what's your experience? I've um, been in business for about 27 years. I've owned two restaurants of my own, and I've opened too many to count. Okay. Who else? Okay. My name is Chelsea Gregoire. I'll be the beverage director for Ida B's Table. And do you have experience in that world? I do. I've served as a bar manager. I've served on the production and sales side within the um, alcoholic beverage realm. I've been a bartender for many years and a barista before that, and so really enthusiastic about bringing this downtown. And you're familiar with all the rules and regulations? Absolutely. My main concern is legality and the safety of our customers first. Thank you. And you will be the one responsible for making sure all the employees go through the TIPS training program, correct? Yes. Our entire front of house staff, um, that includes even food runners and our management, We'll all be taking the uh, TIPS Alcohol Awareness course in, in mid-July. Uh, what is your name again, ma'am? Chelsea Gregoire. And last name is G-R-E-G-O-I-R-E. -E. Okay. Thank you. Yep. My name is Joe Spinelli. I'm one of the board members on the restaurant committee. Um, I've been in restaurant business for about 45 years. I've owned seven restaurants. I own one right now. I've been on about three or four liquor licenses. I have a liquor license in D.C. right now. So my role is to try to help David manage the operation as well. So, Okay, thank you. And the lady behind you? <laughs> yes. My name is Tanya Thomas. I'll be the general manager of Ida B's Table. And what is your background? My background, I've been in the restaurant industry for over 10 years. I've managed restaurants for over five. Okay. Commissioners have questions? Well, got a big name to live up to. <laughs> Ida B. Wells. So. Uh, just so you know, uh, the, the opening, which you're all invited to, uh, is on September 23rd, and the three great-grandchildren of Ida B. Wells are going to be there. Great. Impressive. Anything? Anything? No. Okay. On the basis of the uh, evidence before the board, um, the testimony we've received this morning, I vote to approve the application. I vote to approve. I do as well, and uh, Mr. J, I have to applaud you because you really seem to be putting a lot of important pieces together in an area of the city that that could use the investment so congrats I wish and we all need real news yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, good food. and really good food <laughs> and really good food are there any exhibits that you can no exhibits for the record thank you <laughs> Peter DiPrenzo Ara House Licensee LLC trading as Ara House 301 West 29th Street this is a Class B, Beer and Wine and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership and request for live entertainment and outdoor table service. Please come forward. 
Good morning, or I guess we're now into the afternoon. Good afternoon, Caroline Hecker, Rosenberg, Martin Greenberg. On behalf of the applicant, I'm joined by my colleague, Justin Williams, as well as Peter DiPrinzio, who is our licensee applicant. Uh, good morning. Uh, who's going to testify? Thank you. Uh, Peter would be our primary. Raise your right hand, sir, please. I swear or affirm the testimony that you have had to give in this hearing will be the true soul, truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay, you want to fill us in? Just um, quick clarification, although this is billed as a transfer of ownership, all we're really doing is substituting the individual licensee on the applicant. Mr. DiPrinzio is the general manager of our house. We thought it more appropriate that he be the individual licensee on the license. Um, the ownership of the entity isn't changing, and uh, we're not changing the location, certainly. Um, also, the, the agenda indicated that this was a request for um, live entertainment and outdoor seating. The, li the outdoor seating was already approved as part of the original license. It's really just an application for live entertainment. The zoning didn't allow the, the outdoor live entertainment, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, right. We're Just to be perfectly clear, we're not requesting any outdoor live entertainment. Okay. Um, so the uh, licensed premises is Our House Restaurant. It's up in Remington at 301 West 29th Street. Um, it opened at the end of last year, the, in December of 2016. It's been very well received by the neighborhood. Mr. Williams has handed out a folder full of exhibits. The first few things that you'll see in the file are some of the positive press that we've, um, we've received. Like I said, it's been very well received, very successful so far. Uh, the restaurant includes 10 individual kitchens um, with unique culinary concepts, a shared seating area. They have about 270 seats indoors and about 40 seats at the bar, uh, plus about 100 seats outside on a very large outdoor patio. There's a floor plan in the file that shows the indoor layout and outdoor layout of the, the restaurant, as well as the uh, proposed dance floor area um, is indicated on that as well. We've included in the file some photographs of the, uh, the restaurant showing the, the indoor space as well as the outdoor space. Um, and as I said, the uh, purpose of the hearing today is to add live entertainment. And we went to the zoning board at the end of May. We had a very lengthy hearing at the zoning board on that. And I've included in, in the board's uh, file a copy of the zoning board's decision. They approved live entertainment at this location subject to certain conditions. Those conditions are that it, all live entertainment and dancing be contained indoors in the building. During times of live entertainment, the windows and doors must be closed. The decibel levels must be as required by the city code, and to the extent that there are conflicting provisions in the city code, the lesser of the decibel limits controls. And the hours of operation for live entertainment are limited on Monday through Friday from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. The regular hours of operation are 8 a.m. to midnight, so the live entertainment would stop two hours before they closed. We've met extensively with the local community associations about um, the project generally, our house, the, Rem the Remington Row PUD, and specifically the live entertainment piece. We've included a petition in the file that was signed by two thirds of the households on the block face immediately facing um, the our house restaurant. We've also included a, in the file a letter from GRIA, the Greater Remington Improvement Association in support of the application, and a letter from council president uh, Jack Young in support of the application. We also included an email that we received unsolicited from a neighbor who had had a, a noise complaint about uh, the project generally the trash collection um, was occurring at a very early time in the morning and he was so pleased with how well it had been handled by the the developer that he wanted to let us know how um, how you know responsive we had been and so I included that in the file as well we intend to be good neighbors and this is um, you know we're not intending for the live entertainment at all to become any type of disruptive um, experience for the neighborhood and as I said the, the neighborhood very very much supports it and mr. D Prin uh Prinzio has experience. In I was just about to get to that. And Mr. DiPrinzio <laughs> is the current uh, general manager of our house. He's been in the restaurant industry for seven years. Um, he is a Baltimore City resident. He's familiar with the rules and regulations of the liquor board. They've had no violations so far. He has taken the alcoholic beverages safety training course and keeps that certification current. So um, you know, we believe he is a fit and proper person to hold the license. Um, as I said, with regard to the factors, the board's required to consider there is a public need and desire for the license, as, as for the live entertainment, as demonstrated by the letters of support and the petitions that are in the file. file. Um, although there are other licensees in Remington, our house really is a unique concept that we don't expect the addition of live entertainment here to have any negative impact on other licensees. Um, and we don't expect it to have any uh, negative impact on health, safety, welfare, particularly with the conditions that have been imposed by the zoning board, which we would request that this board adopt as well. Je Sir, is this the case you came on? Yes. Uh, uh, then let's hear from you, okay? Uh, were you sworn in? I don't believe I was, no. Bryson, can you swear in, please? Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the 
testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And your name, sir? My name is, sorry, excuse me. My name is Matt Petrus. Okay, Mr. Petrus, what do you want to tell us? I'm here in opposition to the live outdoor entertainment and outdoor music. Uh, it's going to be outdoor. The zoning board it? didn't permit outdoor live entertainment. I thought in the letter that was sent to me is that, that they sought it, but they didn't get it. That's correct. We had applied for it at the zoning board, and Mr. Peters was present at the zoning board hearing. Zoning board denied the outdoor entertainment. Okay, so on. Okay, so then that's so not. That's off the table now. Okay, all right. Was Fair that enough. your main objection? The, my main objection was to the live outdoor entertainment and music being played outdoors. So that's not going to happen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners have questions? No. Okay. On the basis of, uh, as always, you've submitted a very nice package. Uh, all the information that's been provided to the board this morning, as well as what's in the application and the testimony and the withdrawal of the objection, I'd vote to approve uh, the application. I vote to approve, and Mr. DePrinzo, Princio, I've been there quite a bit. It's always a very smooth operation. There have been no problems, lots of uh, kudos. It's a, it's a great place for everybody. Um, there are even little teeny tiny chairs for the little teeny tiny people that come with big people like me. So I approve 100%. I concur as well. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck. There are a lot of exhibits. <laughs> <laughs> Packet. Let's call uh, Board Exhibit 1, Petition of Support. Applicant Exhibit 1, Business Plan. Thank you. Breonna Cole, Haitian Few, and Sophia Silvergill, Doubles Market and Grill, LLC, trading as Doubles Market and Grill, 2556 Madison Avenue. This is a Class D beer and wine license, an application to transfer ownership, and request for outdoor table service. Please come forward. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Justin Williams on behalf of the applicants from the law firm Rosenberg Martin Greenberg. I'm joined today by uh, Brianna Cole and Sophia Silbergeld, who are uh, the uh, licensed applicants. Can we ask them to be sworn, please? Can I raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thanks. Yes. Uh, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. Sure. This is application to transfer ownership of the existing Class D license uh, held by Andy's Food Mart, Inc. at 2556 Madison Avenue. Uh, the other licensee applicant for your reference is Aisha Pugh. She's unavailable or unable to attend the hearing. So briefly, so I know you have a long docket today, um, I gave you a packet of exhibits for your review with all the information. And the licensed premises is located in Reservoir Hill. Uh, we went before the zoning board in April 2017, and the zoning board granted approval to convert the existing restaurant, existing food store, to a restaurant cafe with outdoor table service. Um, briefly uh, about the existing establishment, there's a picture in your uh, file that shows the premises next to a uh, parking lot, um, and it's across the street from an alley operated by Micah. Um, the existing premises, as shown in the site photos, has bulletproof glass, um, uh, bars in the windows, kind of a remnant of the troubled past the neighborhood has. And the applicants, um, Cole and Aisha Pugh, are seeking to purchase the establishment and uh, kind of join with their existing efforts to revitalize the community. Uh, more background for uh, Cole and Aisha. They're the current operators of Dubcoat Cafe. There's a number of uh, press articles in the in your exhibit there, file there to um, indicate how well they're received. There's a number of people here in support. They can stand now, actually, and show their support. Some were here earlier, and they had to leave because of the length of the hearing. But they're well loved by the community. Um, a great um, benefit to the Reservoir Hill area. Um, in fact, um, in recognition of their community outreach, uh, they were awarded or recognized by Kaiser Permanente to be joined with the uh, Institute of Equitable Leadership, which brings together nonprofit leaders and gives them enrichment and training to do uh, good work in the community. And Aisha Pugh is actually there right now getting uh, training. Receiving the work. We're the only business selected. Great. Uh, the other applicant, Sophia Silbergeld, licensee applicant, is a uh, the members, director of membership and member relations at the Greater Baltimore Committee. Um, she's a Baltimore City resident. Both applicants are familiar with the liquor board's rules and regulations and pledge to abide by them. Um, briefly about the proposed establishment, it will be called Doubles Market and Grill. Um, it'll kind of continue Cole and Aisha's efforts to revitalize the community. 
the establishment will function as a small restaurant with a small retail section of food. So at the front, it'll include a fresh produce from local farms and vendors that will be used uh, in a seasonal menu for diners at the restaurant to enjoy. There will be outdoor seating as shown in the floor plan and for the new exhibits. Um, also included in the file is uh, evidence of community support. There's a petition in, in the file signed by over 216 members of the community and letters of support from Beth Om Synagogue, their neighbor, and the Reservoir Hill Improvement Association. Regarding the factors you are supposed to consider, there's a public need and desire for the license. Um, the community supports it overwhelmingly, people here in support. Uh, there are no other existing licensees in the entire community. This will be the first, or the only license that will continue to be there, and it'll be the only licensed restaurant in the community. Um, so there'll be no ill impact. And in fact, it will help the community by providing eyes in the street and promote safety. And with that, we request. Is there any opposition? Hearing none, I want to thank the neighbors and friends who uh, came to the board meeting uh, today in support and apologize for making you wait so long, but as you saw, we had some long hearings. Um, One more item for the board. There's a, the existing license has restrictions on it as to hours and how it must be operated, so we request that restrictions be removed. Um, and what will be the hours? We are hoping to have them available until 11 p.m. as an option, but we're not planning to operate. When do you uh, open? Um, currently, they open at 7 a.m. Uh -huh. uh, originally, there are offers. The current operators have had the license since 1947. They're retiring, and it was open from 7 a.m. Um, until 7 p.m. And so, um, we're hoping to be able to open at 8 a.m. and then have 11 p.m. at the latest. But um, most of the day business will happen at the cafe down the street. And this is really meant to be the first place for fresh produce and groceries in the neighborhood, and then the evening um, hours to have dinner. Okay, Commissioner. The same license has restrictions to Class A hours, and so we re request that they be removed. Commissioners? Will Duff Coat Cafe still exist? Absolutely. That was my only concern. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, on the basis of uh, this packet of information you provided us, most of, uh, all of which is very positive, uh, the support from the community, the testimony we've heard, the materials in the application, the proffers of counsel, I vote to approve the application. I do as well. I concur. Thank you for your investment. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for your time. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, I'd like to call the exhibit record. Applicant exhibit one, business plan, board exhibit one, letter of support, um, Bethlehem Synagogue, board exhibit two, petition of support. Thank you. Jay Swanson and Mark Bueller. Yeah, I, Mr. Page, uh, I, gotta, I need a, uh, just a couple seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I got a lot of uh, notes taken I've got to do. Uh, I wasn't uh, ready. So. <laughs> Oh, already? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Jay Swanson and Mark Bueller, MCC Resort, Baltimore License, LLC, trading as Dick's Last Resort, 621 East Pratt Street, Suite 100A. This is a Class B, <laughs> Beer, Wine, and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service. Please come forward. Council. Leanne Shrek and Goss with Royston Muller McLean and Reed here on behalf of the applicants. Do you know whether Dick's Last Resort has ever been represented by White for Taylor Preston? I don't know the answer. Yes, actually, they have in the past. Well, and do they have any objection to me hearing this uh, no. case today? None whatsoever. Okay. Um, these gentlemen are going to testify? Yes. Will you raise your right hands, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we are here for a transfer of the liquor license. There is no change in the operation of the establishment. It's the same employees, same management, same operation, same menu, same everything. There was um, an internal reorganization as a result of an overline uh, foreclosure on a bank line of credit. So internal reorganization, renamed entities, and that's why we're here just to transfer it from one entity to the other, as I indicated. Nothing's changing with the operation of the restaurant. In addition to Jay Swanson, who is currently the sole licensee in the Baltimore resident, we are adding Mark Bueller to the license. I will proffer to you that Mark Bueller is a fit and proper person. He's received a copy of this board's rules and regulations. He has in the past served on liquor licenses here in the state of Maryland. He is the CEO, the new CEO for Dick's Last Resort. So he's the one. Yeah, are you Mr. Bueller? That's me. Oh, you're Mr. Bueller. <laughs> okay. I keep thinking Ferris. I'm, I'm uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can. I've that never up. heard that. You're, I know. My, my kids still life. get it today and they're in college. So that <laughs> movie has, uh, has lasted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we all know about that, but. Uh, and this is Mike Gover. He's the general manager for the location, so. Okay, do commissioners have questions? No questions. No questions. Uh, on the basis of all of that, I vote to approve. <laughs> so do I. I concur. 
Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. You're Appreciate welcome. it. Yep. I need a minute. He needs no, a minute. He needs a minute. Are the applicants for 1645 East Baltimore Street present? Do you have counsel? You could get your attorney, please. You should go to the. Let's Ang let's Yang. I'm sorry. Would you like to proceed, Commissioner? They're not yeah. ready. Then let's go. Uh, uh, Amy. Let's go to number 11, because okay. I, I really thought we should have done that at number 5, after 5. Moving to number 11. You ready? I'm sorry, what's number 11? Oh, the last one? Oh, well, um, so, which one are we doing? Is this 1645 East Baltimore? Yes. I, Wonderful. Is, Bryson, are you ready? Ang Yang and Bura Tiang Yang's LLC, trade name pending, 1645 East Baltimore Street. This is a Class A Beer Wine and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership. Council. Abraham Hurdle on behalf of Yang's LLC, trading as Broadway Liquors. Uh, with me is Hang Yang, one of the licensees, and Mr. Biao Tiang, the other licensee. Would they raise their right hands, please? Firm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so I may proffer, please. Uh, this is an in-location transfer. Uh, nothing's going to change about the operation. It's just going to be new owners, new LLC. Um, the current or well, the future operators have very little experience in the industry, but they're planning to keep on the existing owner for a month or two to help them go through the entire process. They've been working with him closely for the last month as well. Uh, Ms. Yang has already gotten her alcohol awareness certification. Mr. Chiang is going to be taking it very shortly. They're both going to be completing background checks. But ultimately, this is a liquor store. There's no tavern element. Um, they're going to be open until midnight, six days a week. And that's it's a pretty straightforward transfer at this time. We're not asking for anything new. Um, there are other establishments in the area, but this is a long established location. Um, it is my understanding that the establishment has not had any violations in the recent past, and neither of my clients have ever had a violation. Um, given their experience. Well, um, how, but how old is Ms. Yang? Ms. Yang, how old, old are you? 32. And what have you, what's your career been? Uh, my career, um, I have been, a, uh, I'm still a, a general manager for the franchise called Charlie's Pretty State, and I also um, a, a realtor and an insurance agent. Okay, and this gentleman? Uh, I'm a clerk at uh, uh, Whitney Supplement uh, retail store. Okay, and how long have you done that? Uh, I've been there five years. Five years. Yeah. Okay. Um, commissioners have questions. I don't. I, I ju Mr. Hurdle, just for the record, I, I do sure. see that there were there. Uh, unless I'm reading this wrong, just to clear it up, that it does appear that the current owner does have some violations. That is my understanding as well, and we hope that they will not continue with sure. the new ownership. That I have spoken extensively to the new owners with regards to how to well how to avoid that sort of a situation. I spoke with the person who does the alcohol awareness training so to make sure they emphasize it specifically with Mr. Tiang um, and when the, he does the training with Mr. Tiang. And I did speak with them in terms of making sure that everyone's carded, whether you have a baseline rule for every employee, whether it's 40 years old or 45, or everyone has to be ID'd. Thank you. Okay. So if there are violations and they're brought to us, they can be some very stiff penalties and the place can be closed, license suspended for a period of time and you'll lose a great deal of money. So you need to be very careful about all those things. Um, okay, on the basis of the information contained here, the testimony presented and the proffers of counsel, I'd vote to approve the transfer. I vote to approve. I do as well. <coughs> Thank you, commissioners. Will we be excused? Yes, thanks. Thank you. No exhibits. Thank you. Amy Thomas and Kwong Min Min Mim and Min Inc. Trading as Old Federal Hill Liquors, 1230-32 Light Street. This is a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license. An application to transfer ownership requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. Please come forward. 
Good afternoon, Your Honor. Brian Everett on behalf of uh, the MIM and MIN tr trading as Old Federal Hill Liquors. Morning. Uh, can we have them raise their right hands, please? <laughs> On the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Yeah, Proffer? Please. Uh, this establishment has been operating for 20 years under the uh, ownership of the Mins, Mr. and Mrs. Min, uh, who are the uh, father and mother in law of the new transfer, the transferee. And uh, Mrs. Min will be remaining on as a manager to guide them in this new business and opportunity for them. And I also like to uh, introduce this into the record. It's a letter from the uh, South Baltimore Neighborhood Association. Actually, we, we seem to have it, but I'll give it yeah. back to Ms. Russell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It'll be received. Yeah, and uh, my understanding is that there were uh, a couple of violations maybe 10, 12 years ago, something on, on that order. But uh, since then, their record has been clean, and uh, they continue to run a, a, an outstanding business that's well received in the community and, and demand. And the new applicants, what's their background? Uh, Mrs. Min is a uh, nurse, I believe. Dental hygienist. Dental hygienist, sorry. And uh, Mrs. Thomas is a property manager. Okay. Uh, and they're prepared for this? Yes, they've both been certified by an alcohol awareness class. Okay. Commissioners have questions? No questions. Uh, briefly, Ms. Min, you're, you're a nurse. How often do you um, intend to spend time at the Store. Um, I'm usually off uh, to, I mean, Monday, Wednesday, I'm off, and weekends, so I try to. Okay. The only reason I ask that is because you have 99.9% .9 of the ownership, so <coughs> if anything happens, all eyes are on you. So to the degree you're there and present and managing things, it's critical. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, on the basis of the evidence uh, presented uh, and the um, support, from the South Baltimore Neighborhood Association. Uh, Proffers of Council, I'd vote to approve the transfer. I do as well. I concur. Thank you. Good luck. Thumbs up is for the record. Board of Zipper 1, letter of support. Well, letter from South Baltimore Neighborhood Association. It's a letter of not aware of any opposition. <laughs> 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 Candace Bruno and John Potts, Jr. Ira Godfrey and Associates, LLC, trade name pending, 900 South Cary Street. This is a Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. An application to transfer ownership. Please come forward. Mr. Kadensky. For the record, Melvin J. Kadensky, 19 East Fade Street, representing the applicants. Good afternoon. Can I ask your clients to raise their right hands, please? Uh, for the record, this is a um, transfer of an existing location. It's been in that uh, area for a long time. The uh, applicant um, is uh, purchasing the, both the property and uh, the business. Um, she has taken the alcohol awareness uh, and has been um, also fingerprinted. I came out just to hand You may, please. Give it to Ms. Russell. Okay. All right. uh, along with that, um, she plans... Uh, to basically uh, be operating the um, business uh, as it has in the past. Uh, she's currently employed by the uh, Securities Exchange in Washington, D.C., um, but she plans on spending about 40 or 50 hours a week here. So from the SEC to the cockeyed cow? <laughs> <laughs> Life is funny like that. So. <laughs> And um, she'll have uh, managers uh, that will work with her. Uh, the current licensee who's here, Ms. Brewster, she's going to stay on for a couple months. And she's been there for 10 years, uh, owning it, and 30 years before that. So she is familiar with the neighborhood. Mr. Potts is here. He is the uh, city uh, resident. Um, they have talked with uh, the people in the neighborhood. Um, as everybody's hitting you things, I figure I might as well do it also. Uh, here's a little... Um, Thank you. Sure. Thank you, sir. I asked. Uh, I love the name. I'm, you're going to change the name? I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and, you know, I asked her, asked her if she knew the significance of Pigtown. She did, so that's a plus. Um, also, have a, um, a letter of uh, support from one of the neighbors, along with the neighbors that she had met uh, in uh, the area. 
Um, the uh, building uh, presently has two sides to it. One is a, a little opener area. She plans on the second side to uh, make uh, do alterations. I know that's a big point with the board. She submit the plans uh, for the alterations and she knows she has to get uh, the permits and everything else. Uh, the problem was the other side basically was just used for private parties uh, and so forth. And uh, she plans on expanding that, uh, adding some um, food to the operation. Uh, she owns property in Baltimore already. She's a committed uh, to uh, Baltimore. She's familiar with the rules and regulations. The liquor board's taking the alcohol awareness and the hours of operation will be uh, the same as they are um, currently. Okay. Do the commissioners have questions? No questions. Okay. On the basis then of the uh, lovely packet Mr. Kanetsky has put together here this morning. I, I know my <laughs> authorship, Candace did that. Okay. Candace did that. Ms. Bruno, um, the um, proffers of counsel and the materials we have and the brief testimony, I'd vote to approve the application. I do as well. I do too, and I just note that the inspector's report indicates an up-to-date trader's license and health license. I assume that all happened yeah. following this proceeding. We're doing, we filed for the UNO, we're doing Thank all you. the inspections now. Thank you. you. Good luck to you. Thanks. I'll close for the record. Advocate Exhibit 1, alcohol burner certification. Advocate Exhibit 2, background check receipt. Advocate Exhibit 3, business plan. Advocate Exhibit 4, live support from neighbor. Thank you. Oh. Sure. Tibolt Mankin, 29th Street, Licensee, LLC, trading as B. Willow, 220 West 27th Street. Yeah, don't make This is a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license. A request to reduce size of licensed establishment. Please come forward. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Caroline Hecker, Rosenberg Martin. On behalf of the applicant, I'm joined by my colleague Justin Williams, as well as Thibaut Mannequin, who's the licensee applicant, and Liz Mannequin. Veda, who is the operator of B. Willow, the store. Good afternoon. Would you raise your hands, right hands, please, both of you? I do. Okay, and this is uh, an a request to reduce the size. I beg your pardon? This is a request to reduce the size of the license. Yeah, usually staff. when I'm in here on an application <laughs> to modify the license premises, it's to expand it and make it larger. This time we're actually asking for a reduction in size. It's a little unconventional, I'll grant you that. But um, the, what brings us here is that you know the licensee acquired the license from Sterling's Crab House back in 2015. They closed in July of 2015. And uh, we got a new tenant in there, but the new tenant didn't need the liquor license. So we looked around for a place we could move the liquor license to because it's a Class A license, and we know the board cannot grant new Class A licenses. So we wanted to try to, try to preserve the, the Class A license for some type of future use. And we had some ideas about where it might go, but there is a moratorium area within certain parts of this neighborhood, and there are churches and schools located in proximity to certain other properties, and we had a kind of difficult time finding a place for it. We finally settled on B. Willow, which has it's recently opened its first brick and mortar location. They were a pop-up florist shop. Um, they do terrariums and plant designs. It's actually a pretty cool concept. Um, and in talking with Ms. Veda, who operates the store, we thought you know it would be really cool if she could offer certain alcoholic beverages that um, complement the the plants. So you know she focuses on botanical things, organic um, alcohol spirits. Um, and in the file you hand, that Mr. Williams has handed um, up to you all, you'll see there's an aerial photo showing the location of the licensed premises. It's at 220 West 27th Street at the intersection of 27th and Crestmont. And the board approved the transfer of the license to that location in the fall. Um, you'll see also some photos of the uh, plant products that um, B. Willow offers and um, a news article from uh, the Baltimore Fishbowl about the, the shop. Originally, when we had the license approved to be transferred there in the fall, we um, applied to license the entire premises. But part of B. Willow's uh, business plan is that they host these private parties where they'll have birthday parties or bachelorette parties, bridal showers, that type of thing, where people will come in and they'll make um, plants, design plants and terrariums. And Ms. Veda can probably speak more eloquently about that than I can. But <laughs> she wanted to be able to allow um, folks to bring in a bottle of wine or champagne or something to drink while they're, they're having these parties. And we realized we couldn't do that as part of a Class A licensed premises. You're not allowed to have any on-premises consumption. So we thought, what if we reduce the size of the licensed premises to only a portion of the store? And you'll see that there's a floor plan in the file that shows 
the proposed uh, location of what the licensed premises would be, which is just in the front of the store. There's a separate entrance in the front of the store. It includes the cash register area. There's another entrance on the side of the building um, that enters into the, the florist shop part of the store. Um, and we, what we thought was if we could reduce the, the size of the licensed premise to limit the area where alcoholic beverages could be sold, then Ms. Veda could offer these private parties in the non-licensed premises part of the store. We met with the zoning administrator, Jeff Veal. He confirmed that there wasn't a zoning issue with this. All the uses were permitted by right. Um, but we did have to come to the liquor board to modify the licensed premises. Now, we understand that there what we want to avoid is opening the floodgates for other Class A licenses to have on-premises consumption because we know that that's not permitted. And we think that there are two ways in which this will not open Pandora's box in that respect. One is that we're voluntarily reducing the size of our licensed premises, so we're not going to be selling alcohol throughout the licensed premises or throughout the, the store. It's only in a very limited portion of the store. And you'll see, in fact, in the file that there's a photograph. This is the extent of the alcoholic beverages sales. It's basically one shelf. They offer five varieties of alcoholic beverages. Um, and what we're requesting specifically is that the board attach a condition to the license that, and that any customers who buy alcohol in the front per portion of the store are not permitted to consume that alcohol anywhere within the Be Willow space. What we want to ensure is that people who are consuming alcohol in the, the back portion of the store in these private parties, which are not you know, public events, it's not like a, a bar or something where you can come in and have a drink, these are private parties um, that you would have to bring your own alcohol, which is not alcohol that could be purchased in the front portion of the store. And we think that that type of condition would limit this, um, this type of arrangement and not open the floodgates for other Class A licenses to have uh, on-premises consumption or consumption within their their stores. Uh, so that, in, in short, is what we're requesting, a reduction in the licensed premises to just the front portion of the store and a condition that consumers who purchase alcohol from the front portion of the store may not consume it anywhere in the Bewillow space. Mr. Page, have we ever done this before? That's, that's uh, No, Mr. Chairman, but it does sound reasonable with okay. the conditions placed on the license. Okay. Um, we do have a letter of support in the file also from the Greater Remington Improvement Association. Yes, we have that. Thank you. Do you have any questions, Commissioner? How is it, how is it enforced? I mean, how is it enforced, enforced internally? And then, of course, our inspection staff, should they come out? I, I'm just trying to understand that. Well, so there are, as you can see, there are only a very limited variety of alcohol, alcoholic beverages that are sold there. So it should be fairly easy to spot. They're all distilled spirits. So, um, I mean, I, I, I suspect that as a practical matter, you wouldn't see someone drinking a bottle of gin at, at one of these parties, although maybe you have a wild bridal shower. I don't, I don't know, but um, no, they all have Be Willow tags on them, so you can see that, and you can see that in the photo that anything that was purchased there would be identified. Yes, uh, just in terms of signs and staff, that was kind of where I was. Oh, in my head. yes, and this, I mean, you're I making mean, sure you're flagging these things. And absolutely, okay. yeah, the, the staff is it would be aware you know, of this arrangement. That they know currently that they're not allowed to be serving on the in the store at all, and that any events that are held in the store would be limited to the area that's not part of the licensed premises. Anything further? No. Okay. Uh, on the basis of the uh, lengthy proffer from Council, and I, I have to know for the record that on my black and white drawing it says see red area. Oh. Um, well, <laughs> but Mr. that's okay. Chair, no, Mr. that's Chair, all right. I think in your file. Oh, you okay. Like We've got that. Um, I, I stand corrected. Um, but on the basis of the uh, materials contained in the application, the proffers from Council, um, and the approval from our Executive Secretary, I would vote to approve uh, the reduction in size. I would concur with the conditions that were outlined by Council. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Moore had to excuse herself, but a vote of two to nothing will carry the day. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All the for the record. Board is Exhibit 1. Love support from Greater Vermonton Improvement Association dated June 28, 2017. F Exhibit 1. Business plan. Thank you. Right, we're back here by Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, could we go back on the record for 1649, I mean 1645 East Baltimore Street? Sure. Number eight on the AM docket, mm -hmm. Mr. Bryson. New, which one is this? So number eight on the AM docket, 1645 East Baltimore Street, was just informed by the chief inspector that they failed the compliance check on last night's service to a minor and we will not physically transfer the license until the current licensees address the violation that occurred on last night. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. We're going to uh, take an hour's recess, is that, if that's all right.
We'll try and be back by 1.30. The board is in recess until 1.30. Thank you. 1648. 1649. I mean, 1645 East Baltimore Street. Mm -hmm. Failed a compliance check last night. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Page. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. The PM docket for the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City will begin. If you're in possession of any type of electronic device, please place said device on off or solid mode during proceedings. Mr. Chairman, there are three preliminary matters before we move forward. Linden Bar and Lounge, Liquors 904-08 West North Avenue. That matter has been postponed. Number two on the PM docket, Bacchus Bar and Lounge, 1220 West North Avenue, postponed. Number five, on the PM docket, Banditos, 1118 South Charles Street, postponed. Call the case of Bong Ong Min, MK Liquors, LLC, trading as North Cafe, 3716 West Belvedere Avenue. This is a Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Here for violation of Rule 4.20CII, Class BD7 licenses open and operating taverns at all times on March the 23rd, 2017. Violation of Rule 3.03C, Employee Records, March the 23rd, 2017. Violation of Rule <coughs> 3.09B, Restroom Facilities and Health Regulations on March the 23rd, 2017. Please come forward and raise your right hands. Raise your right hands. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Council. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Stephen W. Fogelman, on behalf of the uh, licensee. Good afternoon, Mr. Fogelman. Is your client going to admit or contest the? This will be an admission. Okay. Uh, does he want to explain what happened on March 23? Always. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, may I by proffer or? Sure. Do, do uh, that's fine. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Min um, has uh, the establishment 3716 West Belvedere, the uh, North Cafe. Uh, on the night in question, uh, his employee, Mr. Moon, uh, apparently told the gentleman that the bar was closing for an, an hour or so. They weren't going to be granted access. Um, Mr. Min knows the law and knows that that was not appropriate. Um, you know, in, in reality, it was not operating as a BD7 that night for 70 minutes. In any event, um, it, he understands the law. He understands he's responsible for that violation. Um, and it, he has no prior record, and uh, it certainly won't happen again. Um, the employee still remains there, but now he's instructed that he must let people in the bar. Uh, in mitigation, I just want to let you know that uh, really the mitigation's <laughs> longer than any, any other part of this case. Um, it is a real bar. It, it does operate. Um, as far as the employee records, um, Mr. Moon did not know where the employee records were. Um, that situation has been rectified. They're on premises and available for inspections at all time. There was a health department um, violation that has been corrected as well and will not happen again. Involving Is there a dog that lives there? The, it's the my bar? understanding there is no dog. Uh, yeah, the, the, there is the, no one, animal. One, yeah. Okay. One, one day come in, this is a huge problem. No more dog. Okay, so that, that day he was there, though? Yes. yes. Okay. And have the inspectors been back? Yes. <laughs> and uh, can you tell me where the record's on premises and was it open and all that sort of thing? Mr. Fossler? Uh, Chief Fossler, Baltimore City Liquor Board. We've been back, uh, Chairman Board, uh, multiple on multiple occasions. Uh, in fact, we've even done uh, additional checks. We, we, we uh, most recently did a uh, underage uh, operation that included North Cafe, and they passed the test. <coughs> so, and and I would tell you that. Uh, yeah, this is part of the transformation zone, as and uh, as a uh, part of the uh, transformation zone issues and concerns that we had uh, requested and met with the licensee to uh, make certain changes uh, that the transformation zone 
uh, requested as a result of uh, meetings with Northwest District, uh, the uh, code enforcement, uh, with the health, I mean, with uh, housing, and that uh, Mr. Min, in addition to uh, creating a, uh, uh, a journal for uh, contacting the police about loitering issues and everything and documenting those calls, uh, he was requested to put, put up a fence to help reduce that uh, this, by the transformation zone. And well, most recently this, this week received a uh, estimate for that fence. Uh, and we had additionally met with him, uh, members of the police department and liquor board met with him about, uh, again, putting up the fence and helping to reduce certain issues that were impacting the community and uh, the police department in that area. And <coughs> with the, the fence hasn't been completed, but he has complied with everything that we've asked for. So yes, on your return visits, the, the tavern was open and operating? The several times that we've been there, uh, there were patrons inside the tavern, uh, and these were unannounced visits. Records on premises? They were, sir. And the uh, health condition been rectified? The, the, uh, there w wasn't any dog in the, all the, uh, the issues involving a okay. uh, dog <laughs> have been cleaned up and the, uh, the fire exit was open, not padlocked. Okay. Um, right. and very briefly, by way of further mitigation, uh, yeah, your record should reflect an April 21st, 2017 uh, report from Chief Fosler, or, or there was a routine that was clear, and a May 17th routine um, done by Inspector Clark that showed um, compliance check uh, delivery. It was a it was a, a routine while he delivered the notice to uh, for this hearing actually um, that showed all clear. Um, furthermore, uh, let me just through pictures try to explain to you what uh, is going on over there. Um, the police uh, department originally asked um, the licensee to provide us a fence to keep people from loitering at the property next door. And so he put up the fence that you'll see in just a minute, a little picket, little cross fence. Uh, people were able to jump over that. So he has a fence for um, dumpster like that's over six feet tall and it's steel and it came with the building, and the police have asked him to put up a fence like that around those, uh, to those two properties next door. So he's agreed to do that. He's put $1,000 down on the $2,000 job with Jasper Ironworks. Who owns those properties? Um, he owns one of them. Oh, okay. And the other one he doesn't own, but uh, I, he's agreed to comply with this. And, in fact, I'm sorry, I take it back. The city of Baltimore, it's my understanding, owns that second house. So that's why he's not worried about um, asking permission. He is going to get some help from the police department to get a permit without having a BMZA hearing so he can construct this fence. It's going to be over six feet high, and no one's going to be able to jump over it. Um, and then I'll, I'll show you another picture of the other side of the building. The other side of the building is owned by the shopping center, and that's also a loitering area. And because that's not his property and not the city's property, there's... Not, we haven't figured out what needs to be done there, but the BPD apparently is approaching the sh owner of the shopping center to see if they can make some improvements. So okay. I'm, I'm impressed that I don't remember somebody doing all this for a problem. He's never been cited for loitering, and yet he's willing to do these things. He, uh, I had him start a guest book to show customers who felt like admitting that they were in that bar would sign, um, and they have since May 26th, since he was served. Uh, additionally, when Inspe Chief Fosler, um, officers from Northwestern District, and Inspector Chris Agent Chris Amalis were um, at the location when I was 10 days ago to take some pictures of the fence and talk about what needed to be done. Um, at that time, the bar was clean and orderly, and there was a customer who was surprised that I was taking a picture in there. So, in any event, it, it's a real it's bar. Smile. <laughs> no, it, it's probably not a good idea to, to do that. <laughs> in any event, um, he understands that this is the law is the law. He hasn't had any infractions yet, uh, doesn't inspect, expect any more, and really uh, believes that this $2,000 investment will be a um, 
will be uh, something that's going to cause him less trouble down the road. He wants to be a good neighbor, and um, on that, I rest and appreciate your consideration. Okay, commissioners, you have questions? Did, I just was curious, the photographs that you gave us, when were those taken? They were taken 10 days ago, um, exactly. So the brown almond signs are yes. from 2014 are still there? <laughs> yes. I thought maybe these were taken in 2014. That's right, exactly. So, so okay. lives on, campaign signs live forever, these new plastic <laughs> <Apparently>. ones. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. And, and the purpose of the fencing is to keep people from loitering on the steps mm -hmm. of the of the property right okay okay and that right. wasn't his idea that was an idea worked out with the mayor's office i believe and with bpd that this would be and something attractive something something's going to be effective and not uh, unsightly on okay. the street it's a great place to hang campaign signs <laughs> <laughs> just kidding <laughs> okay thank you okay um anything further no, so just to finally, uh, I'd ask that since he's spending $2,000 on this fence, then maybe there could be some creative way one could fine him and, um, and suspend the fine when final payment is shown. Um, given that he's, well, he's putting in $2,000 to do this, I'd ask that you have some consideration or, or any way you can do it legally. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, to begin with, I would find on the basis of the admission uh, and the information provided uh, in our records uh, that uh, there was on March 23, 2017, a violation of rules 4.20C, small double I, rule 3.03C, and rule 3.09B. Um, in consideration of uh, everything that has been told us today and the fact that things were rectified rather promptly and the cooperation that's been uh, testified to with the city um, and this being the first violation um, I would impose a minimum fine of a hundred dollars given 30 days to um, to pay it so you know how I feel about this particular violation and all that it represents and um, the unique advantage that goes to persons who hold this license, this type of license, and um, I did have a little, just a personal concern about the dog. Is is the dog okay? The dog is not there, and the, the dog, dog is, is okay. The dog is living with someone. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm persuaded. Of course, I agree that the violation did occur. I'm persuaded by the um, the quick remedy and your acknowledgement that. This was not an appropriate act on behalf of your agent, um, so I will um, I will uh, concur with the one hundred dollar fine. Actually, what I I need to um, I, I know if Mr. Akris were here, we he advised violations. me there are three violations, so I would apportion my hundred dollar fine thirty three dollars a piece and make it ninety nine dollars. Uh. Well, I don't know if I can go along with that. I feel like. <laughs> I need to find one of them for $34. I'm going to go with the $34 fine for the dog. Okay, that's fine. Right. I'll agree 33 with that. 33 and 33. Okay. I, I concur with uh, this plan that my colleagues have just <laughs> uh, So. Uh, and you have 30 days uh, to pay. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you very much. And it's rare that we get testimony regarding so much good cooperation with the police department. And, and I just would say that that is very significant in, in, in my uh, decision. Yes, thank keep you thank, thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, there were. Yes, that's what she did. All the exhibits yeah. for the record. Report uh, Exhibit 1, Investigation Report, Chief Inspector Mark Foster. Report Exhibit 2, post Police Report, Detective Greenhill. He was mean to you. Report Exhibit 2, Comar Code 0 .02 definition. Report Exhibit 4, Comar Code 2, I mean point two three Building, Cleanliness, and Operation. License to exhibit one photos. License to exhibit four construction receipt. Thank you. Ashley Kim and Kwong Lee, Eric Inc. Trading as Whispers, 1807-11 Baker Street. This is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Here for violation of rule 4.20CII, class BD7 licenses. 
open and operating taverns at all times on March the 22nd, 2017. Please come forward and raise your right hand. Everyone raise your right hands, please. And we swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Council. Thank you. Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of the licensees. Good afternoon. Will this be an admission? This will be a denial. Denial. Okay. Very uh, brief. Okay. Um, who's going to testify on behalf of the liquor board or the police? I'll read in uh, my report. Okay. Identify yourself, please. Detective Bill C. Greenhill, OID Vice. Okay. Detective. On the uh, 22nd March of uh, this year, between the hours of um, 11.20 and 11.28 p.m., Detectives Greenhill and Gatto of OID Vice, along with Chief Inspector Mark Fossler and Agent Chris Amalis, both for the Baltimore City Liquor Control Board, conducted a BD7 check at 1807 Baker Street, a liquor establishment known as Whispers. Also working, but in a plainclothes capacity, was Detective Akawande of Vice and Inspector Perez of the Baltimore City Liquor Control Board. The purpose of the BD7 check was to determine if the establishment that are considered LBD7s are operating their taverns by allowing pa patrons in the real bar area to consume alcoholic beverages. It is known that most liquor establishments throughout the city of Baltimore operate their BD7s by only operating the packaged goods side of their establishment and not opening the taverns to the public. Therefore, on the aforementioned date and time, Detective Baca one day and Inspector Perez entered inside the packaged goods side of Whispers, located 1807 Baker Street, in an attempt to gain entry into the tavern side of the establishment. Detective Agawande walked to the back door and tried, to, tried a white button with a pink arrow pointed to it. When nothing happened, Detective Agawande tried the doorknob, but it was locked. At that time, an Asian man wearing a blue fleece jacket and corrective lenses, glasses, asked Detective Agawande what he wanted. Detective asked if the bar, the bar, the tavern side, was open. The store clerk later identified as Jung King Kim nodded no thus refusing Detective Akawande and Inspector Perez to enter the tavern side of the uh, establishment. Instead, Detective Akawande purchased a 100 milliliter of Fireball, which was sold to him for $3 by Mr. Kim, without asking for any identification. Detective Akawande and Inspector Perez left the establishment and notified Detective Greenhill via text message that the bar refused service to them. Minutes later, Detectives Greenhill and Gatto along with uh, Inspector Mark Fossler and Agent Chris Amalis entered the establishment known as Whispers located at 1807 Baker Street. We advised the employees, one of which being Mr. Wa Mr. Young K. Kim, that he refused service to Detective Ang Akawande and Inspector Perez, who again were working in plain clothes capacity, posing as customers. Detective uh, Greenhill and m advised Mr. Kim that the establishment would remain open, but a report would be written and sent to the liquor board for review. Agent Chris Malice advised Mr. Kim that if packaged goods is open, the tavern must also be open. The establishment was left in the control of Mr. Kim. Questions for the detective? Um, no, thank you. Okay. Um, do you want to present testimony? Yes, thank you very much. Call. I will call Dave Moon. Uh, M-O-O-N? Yeah. All right, thank you. Mr. Moon, um, you work at Whispers yeah. at 18? I was right beside Kim at the, at the moment. You were right beside Mr. Yeah. Kim that night. Okay, and it was 11.25, 11.20 at yes, night? Yes, sir. Okay, um, and how long have you worked at Whispers? Uh, about one month at the time. At the time. Yeah. What? How, how long have you worked in bars in Baltimore City? Oh, about 40 years close. Close to 40 years. Yeah. All right, and um, it's, is it fair to say that you are aware of Rule 4.20? Yes, sir. Okay, and you understand yes, that sir. the bar must be operating yes, at all sir. times. So what did you see at 1120 that night when the officers came to the bar? What did, what did you see? Uh, at the time, a guy named Kim was the right, right side, I was in the left side, and only see, I see, Somebody was just trying to open the door. Then Kim said no. Then they asked the price of our Lemmy. They went out. Then about 30 seconds later, four people came in. Liquor board inspector. We let them in. Okay. That's what that's what, what, did, what did you hear Mr. Kim say no? I, uh, he said, he told me, I think I heard no, but he told me, 
He said, no, the region, he said, no. They didn't say they want to go in the bar because we have, you know, electric switch to open the door. And some guy would try to open the door. He said, oh, no, that's what, that's what, he, that's what he's telling me. And I was right there. All right, and what, what did that signify to you? Did that To me, it's not actually whether to open the bar or not. He, he responds. I don't know, I mean, way of most dangerous or anything. We usually ask the people, people usually come in, ask us, can I go in the bar? Then we leave the, we leave the door open. What but other ways do they ask to get in the bar? No, no. no. Only thing they did try to open the door like that. Okay. Then Kim, would said, you, Kim said no, I believe. Would you have opened the bar for the patrons if, if they you ask us, yes, sir. Do, if, if you realize they wanted to go into the Yes, bar. sir. Okay. Um, so to me, Ms. Mr. Kim and the person undercover police, they had miscommunication to my knowledge. <laughs> all right. Um, you understand that you, you have to keep the bar open oh, at yes, all sir. times. Yes, sir. That you have yes, the I, I, other I used, part of the extension. Yes, sir. I used to only go to Fair Street. 900 block, now they disappear because redevelopment. And I used to own the liquor store, Caribou Street. I used to own the liquor store, Park Avenue. I used to own the liquor store, 2643 Sister Avenue. Ever since 1970, I've been in the liquor business, so I do know all the rules. All right, again, uh, you understand that uh, going forward, that oh, yes, this sir. will be open at all times? Yes, sir. Okay. 20%. All yes, right, sir. thank you. Now, um, the evidence is that they rang the buzzer uh, what happened then? They didn't ring the buzzer. They just tried to open the door. Well, that's not the, the evidence from the because detective. There is, there is no ring the buzzer in there. That's the only, only way we, we, we push the button, the door open automatically. Um, well, the report, which went, which went unchallenged, says um, that they walked to the back, tried a white button with a pink arrow pointed to it, and nothing happened. No, because that's the only entrance is front of the way, and only way the door is like, the door is locked. It's a tavern, but it's not open. No, it was open. <laughs> but I mean, it's not, you, you can't just walk in. You have to be admitted by somebody you know, else. Over there on west side, there are so many teenagers, they want to come in. Sometimes when customers come in, they follow in, they hide in there, they sit there, they refuse to leave then it will create a lot of problems. So we usually want to make sure we want to send person who are age over 21 only. So that's the only reason we can control crowd, you know, because a lot of young teenagers, they want to come in. I understand, but so did Mr. Kim think that the detective was not over 21? No, he but was what? old, but Mr. Kim didn't really realize he didn't know they want to go come in the bar. He thought, he told me, he thought they would just try to open the door and he responded naturally, oh no, like that he told me. Okay. Uh, anything further? Um, very briefly, just in, in closing, uh, it, it seems here that there was some misunderstanding. There wasn't the actual word spoken, can we get in? Guys will come in and hey, hey let me in, or something affirmative. He did, yank, they did yank on the door and so, and there was some kind of negative uh, assent or some kind of symbol, uh, some kind of expression showing that something was wrong. Um, again, I think if Mr. Moon had been the one that had been face to face on this, it, it may have been different because he knows the law. Um, again, uh, Mr. Kim still work there? Yes, he does. He does. The law now? Yes, he does. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and in fact, uh, you know, I like to stumble in on these places unannounced, and it's a real bar. It, it, it is active. Um, there was a breakdown of communication that night, and I understand that the, uh, the licensees understand that that uh, doesn't reflect well on them. They are first-timers, uh, never had a violation, hopefully never come back here and, and have another violation, um, and on that, I'll rest. Thank you very much. And have you been back? Has anybody been over there since then? We have been back. Were they in operation? There, there, there's something I have to interject with that. Okay, okay, Mr. Fossler. It's included in my report. That when we entered the establishment uh, at approximately 11.20 p.m., 
we, the operators, and this is included in my report, the operators explain that the reason that the, the detectives and the inspector wasn't let in was because the bartender was sick. That's not what, there was no other explanation about pulling on the door. It was that the bartender had been sick. That's why they weren't admitted. And I, I'd like to ask Mr. Moon just to be pr briefly testify to that, because that, that is also a fact. Um, and I'll ask, or I'll let him explain. Um, he, he could have and has bartended, um, but he is not, he is not a bartender by trade. I, I say, who did you speak to when you went in? Was it Mr. Moon? Yeah, Mr. Moon, this gentleman here. After yeah. he, after he came in, I mean, I told him the bartender didn't show up today. That's the only thing I, I told him. And the problem here is that Mr. I, I just make this proper. Mr. Moon uh, doesn't make cocktails. He only can serve beer and wine in bottles. And so he he would have had to tell them that if you guys want cocktails, you got to go somewhere else. And all I can do is crack beers for you. So, again, thank you. Commissioners, have any questions? Um, not not so much a a question, but j just an observation. Um, there's inconsistencies in the in the testimony as to what happened and but what is clear is that the door was locked and the um, guests were waved off and told no and not uh, not allowed in so I think that's for all the other testimony I mean that's the essence that's the one thing that is consistent so I think that's a concern yeah I, I understand your concerns and the best that these employ that these employers can do is to direct their employees to follow this law. Um, Mr. Moon is has instructed, and Mr. Kim have instructed all employees that patrons have to be let in. So they they understand that this was a failure on their part, despite what they believe was a miscommunication initially. What is Mr. Moon's title or job? Is he just a clerk? Actually. Uh, Mr. Kim is my cousin. I'm helping him out. So, so this is Mr. Yeah. Kim, the licensee? Yeah. Okay. So Mr. Moon is not the licensee. I'm not no, right now. I understand that. Yes. Okay. I retire, so I help him out. I retire already. So. And he happened to be present that night. So. Okay. Any, anything else? Okay. Anything further? No, thank uh, you very much. On the basis of the testimony presented, um, I would find a violation of Rule 4.20C small double eyes on March 22, 2017. Um, it, it is the first offense I believe that this licensee has. Um, I'd impose a fine of $350 and give them 30 days to pay it. So um, <coughs> I, <coughs> I concur that there was a violation and I agree with the imposition of the fine. <coughs> I just want to say that for whatever reason, there have been two or three references today in these hearings about young uh, men in Baltimore, and the the inference is that they are a problem, and I don't want it to go unnoticed that that's what I heard, and I also don't want it to go unsaid that I find that um, inappropriate that anybody would come here and um, explain themselves by maligning citizens of Baltimore categorically. I just have to say it. Um, it, it, it feels very um, uh, uncomfortable to me to hear it, and I can't give witness to it without saying that um, when people come here to this board, I would hope that they would focus on their own actions and their own inactions and not malign the citizens of Baltimore in trying to explain their actions. I feel very strongly about that and there's a whole lot more that I could say um, as a black woman. I feel very strongly about that and it, it's painful to hear it and I'm not gonna not speak out on it, okay? I, um, I concur with the finding of the violation and the imposition of the fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You have 30 days to pay. Thank you all. Have a great July 4th. You too. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Are there any exhibits? Um, I'm sorry, yes. Board Exhibit 1, Investigation Report, Chief Inspector Mark Foster. Board Exhibit 2, Police Report, Detective Elsie Green Greenhill. License Exhibit 1, two photos. Thank you. Does that conclude us, Mr. Page? It does, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. The board is in recess until July the 13th, 2017, 11 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Are you able to carry or do you want me to hold no, on to no, no, next? No, I got it. <laughs> no, I got it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you want these? Yep. All right. Oh, yeah, these are my exhibits. <laughs>